Hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm a working actress, and I go on set a lot and get hair and makeup done all the time. And sometimes the makeup is a little bit heavy, and my skin's not really used to that. I want to make sure it's breathing. And I heard Nerd is the best, and so I want to see what she has as far as uh, cleaning it and making sure I'm taking good care of it. Hello everybody, welcome to another Ask Nera to Joy video. We have a special guest here today and her name is Jen and she's my client that I'm going to be diagnosing and talking to her about her skin and how she feels about her skin and we're going to do a treatment. So let me ask you if there is any concerns that you have with your skin before we get started. Is there anything that you're number one allergic to? And number two, is there anything that you are concerned about, especially with your skin? I'm not allergic to anything. Okay, that's and, great. And uh, not that I know of anyway. And as far as concerns, I feel like, um, I, feel like I have dryness a lot um, in certain areas and, uh, and I, it just doesn't retain moisture. Yes. Um, so other than those two things, except for right around my forehead and nose area, those always tend to not look dry. So it's yes. kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, what I can see looking at your skin without even bringing the light over is that you are surface dry. And I can yeah. see that because I can see these tiny little fine lines. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can zoom in and see this at some point too, but we have these tiny little fine lines that we know are not really wrinkles but they are um, more what we call, um, there's different kinds of wrinkles. There's wrinkles that occur as a result of loss of collagen elastin as we get older. And then we have our expression lines. And then we also have wrinkles that appear just from dryness because we're not protecting our outer area, outer skin. Oh. So it does, um, it is a reflection of the environment and air conditioning and the things that are really harsh on the skin where you can get what we call just dehydrated. Oh, that so, makes sense. Yes, yeah, so and I can see around the sides of your nose, you have these tiny little fine lines that are not really wrinkles because we know we can get rid of them. And also on your forehead here. But the interesting thing I see with your skin is that your pore size is quite large. You know, so what when I look from an esthetician's point of view, even when I see somebody that has a great skin, it's my job I know to make their skin even better. So what when I look at Jen's skin, I my immediate thought is, wow, she her pore size is fairly large and yet I know she doesn't have a lot of blackheads. So because her pore size is large and she's surface dry, when she frowns up like this, you can really see not her expression lines, which she has also, but you see these other little fine lines that we know that we can get rid of. And we know that we just need to change Jen's home regimen because that's what's gonna really make a difference, what she does every day at home. So um, this, in doing this, her pore size, as I said, is quite large. We need to work with her elasticity and that we need to stimulate the fibroblast cells to really get that to be tight those pores to be really tight. Now the other thing that I noticed, she has a little bit of color around her eyes, so underneath her eyes, she's a little gray. She's a little dry around her eyes, but she's also a little bit gray. So I'm going to talk to her about her eyes in, a little later because we know we need her to be using an eye product uh, morning and night, twice a day, to really help pick that area up. So not only is she a little bit dry around her eyes, she, her coloring is a little bit gray. So then the other thing that I notice is she has a lot of capillary damage on her chest, her decollete. And that um, is what we call cuperose. When you can see the little blood vessels and you can actually see the wall of the blood vessel, uh, sometimes people that retain a lot of fluid will have capillary damage. In uh, Jen, Jen's case, it is not fluid as much as it is she is getting a lot of sun on this area. So when she's driving, she is, um, you know, when you have the visor and then the sun just pelts in on the, the lower part of the face and onto that chest. And this area is a really difficult area to treat because unlike the face, we can do all these fabulous peels and work with different AHAs and retinols that um, are very effective in, in shrinking pores and helping with the, the depth of a wrinkle. But on the chest area where she has capillary damage, 
she's got a lot of ruddiness there and um, and it's it's not all the way down it is just in an area where she's probably wearing shirts that are either round neck it looks like more of a round neck than a v-neck and we want to make her aware that when she's driving that she needs to either zip it up and wear something higher on her neck or that she's putting a really good sunscreen there because living here in California it is um, it's pretty hot we have a lot of sun and ever since the eclipse we have even a stronger sun so it is something that I will uh, make sure she knows about before she walks out. So what I am applying here on Jen's skin is the cleanser. The cleanser that I chose to use on Jen is a non-foaming gel and if you've seen a lot of my videos in the past you will know that I am not a foaming cleanser fan. The reason being because most people are surface dry you can be a drier skin and have surface dryness, which is what we call a subcondition. And you can be oily and have surface dryness, which again is called a subcondition. So what I see on Jen's skin, she doesn't have a lot of oil in her skin. Uh, she's surface dry and she has larger pores. And if you can see as I'm massaging her face, you can see her skin moves quite a lot with my hands even though I'm not massaging very firmly. So we know that I know because of her skin type and because I've been doing this for a gazillion years that she that we can make her skin a little firmer and we can also get rid of that surface dryness that she has which is going to improve her pore size so that's something that's really important is that we want to make sure that we can get rid of that dryness now when you have surface dryness your treatment products that you put on your face are not going to be absorbed as well as when you don't have surface dryness and surface dryness is aging you know it gives you those fine little lines that of course living here in California we have very little humidity and, uh, and most people are surface dry. So that is why I do not use foaming cleansers on people. Um, it, you have to be a true oily skin with your subcondition uh, being also oily. And, and that's the only time I will recommend or use a foaming cleanser on somebody. So we're cleansing off her skin here. It's, um, it's really important when you cleanse the skin, and you'll see I'm spending a lot of time cleansing, is that because we have fine facial hair, it's very important that you get underneath that hair. So whenever you're massaging your face at home, you wanna make sure you do circular motions so you're really getting underneath the hair so that you're cleansing the skin really well. And what I find with a lot of people is that they just don't cleanse their skin really well. And uh, often, in many cases, a toner is not even necessary. Uh, people are using toners because they like, they feel that it is that extra form of a cleanse. So I very much believe in using a cleanser, massaging it into the skin really well, and then getting a warm, clean, warm, wet washcloth. We want to use a clean washcloth every night, and that first cleanse must be done with a warm, wet washcloth. So it's... Um, it's very important. So what we have here is there are different levels of dryness. You can have the very outer layer that's dry and as I said living in California it's really tough because we don't have the humidity in the air that Jen was familiar with coming from Florida. So she's really noticing that her skin is very surface dry just by living here. And what's important to understand is that her levels underneath, I can tell her levels underneath, she has hydration. So what that tells me is that I know she's drinking water, she's trying to keep up with that because, and it's working because I can tell underneath, it's, uh, it's hydrated underneath, it's just the very outer layer. So because we know that Jen is a little surface dry, <clears throat> her levels underneath, she has good hydration underneath. I can see that by looking at her skin and the way her skin moves when I massage it is telling me I know that she, she's drinking her water, but it's just that very outer layer that's surface dry. So let's ask Jen what her home care regimen is, if you wouldn't mind telling us, please. No, no, no. <laughs> and I do drink lots of water. Yes, a I lot. can see that you're hydrated, your levels, yep. Uh, I... Um I wash it, I cleanse it every morning and every evening. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really do anything in between those two times. Mm -hmm. uh, 
when I am in the morning and I wake up and I cleanse it, um, I spray some um, some mist on it, mm -hmm. and then I put on some uh, cream before I put on. Oh, I put on three. I put on a cream, and then I put on my sunblock, and then I put on my base, which also has SPF in it uh, for makeup. Okay, but let's let's talk about just the cleansing, just right at the moment. Is okay. your what type of cleanser are you using? Like, what does it look like? How does it feel on your skin? How? What is the application of it? Uh, it's foam. It's a foaming, <laughs> which is funny because you were talking about that. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I could get away from the foam. I didn't realize uh, that you said foam was for oily. Yes, not for you. <laughs> uh, so that kind of tells me that right there that. You know, I'm perhaps using the wrong cleanser altogether. But yes, it's, and it's typically it's very light. It's not um, heavy, and I feel like what you're putting on me now is kind of a heavy gel. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes sense that the light foam stuff isn't doing what it needs to be doing. Yes, so good to know. So now we know why Jen is surface dry. The uh, moving to California, having uh, coming from an area where there was a lot of humidity in there, which is Florida, where she's from, and now living in California where it's very dry, as well as using a foaming cleanser doesn't work. Now, if you, depending, you know, if you live in certain places where it's really humid, the foaming cleanser might work for you if you are oily. But in her case, she's not really oily and she's just very surface dry, and it gives a foaming cleanser gives that illusion that your skin is clean because it makes your skin feel tight and squeaky clean. And it takes off all my makeup. Yes, yes, it, it does that too, which is, is a very good thing, right. but of course the dryness um, is what happens as a result. So a gel cleanser, there are all cleansers, should be a pretty good cleanser on your skin, and especially at night time when you go to cleanse your skin, that's why you use a clean washcloth. Mm -hmm. It's important to take your cleanser off onto something because that's gonna help your, keep your skin clean. It's going to get rid of any makeup or sunscreen that you have on your skin because sometimes just rinsing it is not enough. So it is really important to use a, a good cleanse that's going to cleanse your skin, mm -hmm. and, um, but, but it not be one that's drying your skin. Got it. Because then that sets a slate up for a very dry surface, which then creates a problem for your treatment products that you then put on afterwards. Right. It's not going to be absorbed the same. So that's something that's really important. I think that the, um, the washcloth thing too, because I don't use a washcloth. Yes, I, it'll make a huge difference I, for you. Fantastic. And, and you'll feel, uh, you, you know, you will feel, your skin will feel different and not so dry, like you're having the need to put on moisturizer throughout the day. Fantastic. It's not going to happen. But the other thing that you mentioned, you said you just use a cleanser in the morning and at night, and that's, mm -hmm. you shouldn't use a cleanser any more than that. Twice a day oh, is good. all you should do. Oh, good. Yes, well, at absolutely. least I was doing something right. Absolutely. <laughs> So what we're doing now is taking off the cleanser. I'm using disposable sponges, but of course for home care, you need to use just a warm wet washcloth. Okay, so what we've done is we've cleansed Jen's skin right now. I'm using an exfoliant on her, and the, the exfoliant that I prefer to use on most people is an exfoliant that has a, is a papaya enzyme based. This one has a little bit of glycolic in it, so she is gonna feel some tingling, and it has lemon peel powder, it, uh, it's an exfoliant that has a buffing effect on the epidermis. And what I really love about exfoliants that are not granular and ones that are more buffing on the epidermis is they are what we call a surface regenerative. So they really cater to absorbing dead cells without being aggressive on the skin because at the same time we don't want to irritate little capillaries and a lot of people nowadays are very sensitive and scrubbing exfoliants are very drying and they're also a little abrasive, uh, especially nowadays because there are so many people having laser and things done. So it's really important that we use an exfoliant that has more of a buffing effect on the epidermis. So now what I'm doing is I don't like to leave my exfoliants on the skin for very long. They do not need to dry. If I left this one for three to five minutes, it would start to dry on her face. And I don't want even a mask, I don't want things to dry on people that already have surface dryness because that's going to add to it. So we want to make sure that 
you, you put it on, you massage it in for a little bit, you get it underneath that fine facial hair that we talked about so that you're really exfoliating the skin well so that when we go to use a serum and a treatment product which we're going to be massaging into her skin shortly, it's going to go into her skin really well, be well penetrated and it's going to do a really nice job for her. So what I'm doing here now, we've, uh, we've cleansed her skin, we've done an exfoliant on her skin that we described, an exfoliant that is one that has an absorbing effect on the epidermis, um, a buffing effect. Now this one that we're putting on now, and you've seen in my previous videos, as you can see this is quite yellow in colour. I like very much to work with bioflavonoids, arnica, ivy, mallow extract, uh, things that support ingredients that support little blood vessels. And for me, as you can see, it's quite yellow in colour and it's going to make the towels yellow, which is not great for the laundry department. <laughs> but, uh, but it really helps support little capillaries. And, and Jen's skin, she can flush. She can get a little, a little red, a little flushed in the face. So we really want to make sure that we work in some good flavonoids into her skin to really help support those little blood vessels. So I'm using a little vial here that is uh, one that we're just working in here to her skin. And as I said, it's quite yellow in color. So what we've got, we've got the bioflavonoid on her face, which is a serum that contains a lot of useful ingredients that really help support capillaries. And that is your bioflavonoids with your arnica, your ivy, your mallow extract. It helps support the little blood vessels and especially because Jen, she tends to flush easily and uh, it's going to really help just support her capillaries and just help give her skin some life because the great thing about bioflavonoids is they really feed the skin a lot of nutrients and that's something that's so important what we want to be doing. So I'm massaging her skin now. And I, I didn't know until somebody had pointed out on um, one of my Q&As of a video that sometimes I've been doing this for almost 40 years, skincare. So sometimes when people, I've had people say, well, it looks like you're massaging your movements down on the face, which are not okay. But I will say when you're, you've been doing it for a really long time, you realize that whenever I'm massaging upward, my movements are a lot firmer than when I'm going down. And because I just do it automatically, it's not something that I'm really that conscious of. So my pressure is not the same when I do my downward motions as it is when I do my upward. And yes, of course, downward motions at a heavier pressure is not ideal. So we want to keep it uh, consistent and we're always going the upward motion is what we really want to be focusing on. That's what's important. I like to massage a lot around the neck and the jawline because this area here, as we get older with gravity, we tend to get the jarling. And being one myself that's constantly worrying about one's neck, trying to work the neck and work it in a way that is always benefiting and lifting, we want to make sure that a lot of the movements and a lot of the massage movements that we do are always in the upward motion. So I do a lot of massaging of the neck, a lot of the rolling movements, and just help for it to really support this area on the face. And I go reasonably firm. I'm not going as firm, obviously, right here and I'm cupping my hand, but sh she can feel that I'm definitely working that skin around the jaw on the bone there. Massage is so important for the skin. It really helps to stimulate muscle tone. It brings oxygen to the blood. So it's a really, really important part of my facial. I find myself doing longer massages than ever before because I know the importance of it. And especially nowadays, if people are doing a lot of Botox, they're not, they don't have the movement to even move that lymphatic system in the face the same. So it's really important to make sure that they get movement because it flushes out the garbage and it, it allows for a lot of the, the good, brings the oxygen into the blood there. So we want to really make sure that we massage the face a lot and uh, and that's what I like to do in my treatments but I also recommend for home as well that you really 
you massage your treatment products and serums into your face, it's really important uh, to, again, get under that fine facial hair on the sides of the face so that you're really, uh, really bringing the blood, the oxygen to the blood. And it stimulates muscle tone, and that's something that's so important as well. So it really changes the skin when you're massaging the skin. Uh, so Jen, you had mentioned earlier that, uh, because I had, had said your levels seemed very hydrated, and you said, oh, you're right, you, I drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Do you, is there a certain type of water that you drink? Is it an alkaline water or one that maybe you add a little bit of lemon or something to? Uh, I use filtered water. I use filtered water. Uh, but the the lemon, it's interesting because I don't prefer lemon in cold water, but I do in hot water. Oh, yes. Uh, so I typically, if I go to a restaurant or anything like that, I'll order hot water with lemon. Yes. And uh, at home, I typically have just um, room temperature water. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, what they do say is because every physical body is different, there are systems that work better with cold water and there are some that work better with room temperature water. Mm -hmm. And I know from my, my own experience that cold water doesn't work for me, mm -hmm. the same as if I'm drinking room temperature. Agreed. And I think a lot of the filtered water and just a lot of the neutral water is even better than a lot of the bottled waters mm -hmm. that are out today because they're not all so fabulous you know oh, for, for everybody so it's um it's something that it's really important i always say to people just make sure whatever it is that you're drinking um and i'm not talking about alcohol or coffee or other things here but just <laughs> in water in the case of water that it tastes good on your palate that whatever it is that you're drinking um, water that it, it does it is a water that tastes good to you it's very important that it tastes good sure my, my mom came to visit not too long ago, and I had a, originally had a Brita system, and she didn't say anything at all. And then she had left, and two weeks later, I got this fancy filtration system that was not Brita. And, and I didn't realize, I was like, I didn't realize she had a problem with my Brita system, but the, mm -hmm. the, the one that she sent me is very, um, tastes good. Yes. It tastes really good. Yes. So I understand that. And actually, I stopped drinking coffee um, March in March this year, uh, and I noticed a difference, um, which is fantastic. And I stopped drinking alcohol about a month ago, and you had mentioned the, the discoloration around my eyes a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's gotten a lot better since I stopped drinking alcohol, oh, too. Oh, that's so wonderful, yes. So I think, you know, what we put in our bodies, both food and fluid, is, plays a big it's difference. It's really important, yes. Sure. Now we're going to remove the excess, the lotions here. And for some people at this point, I would be doing my extractions because I like to do it after I've worked treatment products into the skin. In Jen's case, we're not doing extractions on her. I'm going to be putting on a mask and um, we've used some treatment products that contain a little bit of retinol on her, uh, a little bit of the alpha hydroxy acid. And we just want to help those pores to shrink a little so we can get her texture in good shape as well as get rid of her surface dryness which is so important. So the mask I've chosen to put on Jen's skin I'm not going to let dry because again we don't want things to dry on her face because she is surface dry. So this particular one I'm using is what we call it's a purifying mask and it has I've massaged in a little bit of a cream that has retinol in it so I I just want to, as I said, I'm working on stimulating her muscle tone and just helping her skin to not be surface dry, but also just to help shrink those pores a little bit. So we really want to focus on the tr that as a treatment for her today because she's here and uh, we want to make sure that she walks out feeling really good and looking at her skin and being able to see a, a smoother texture in her skin with a smaller pore size. That's really important. So now I'm going to put on a little bit of an eye gel around her eyes, up under her eyes. I don't want, sometimes on the edge where the mask is around the eye area, sometimes it starts to dry there very quickly and I really don't want the mask to dry up under her eyes. So I'm just putting a little bit of eye gel here and 
That way we know it's not going to set around that area of her eyes. So what I've got here, we've got the purifying mask on her face, neck and decollete. And now what I'm putting on Jen's face is I've got a gauze, a sheet of gauze, and I've just soaked the gauze in a, in a lavender paraffin. And I like to work with paraffin as a catalyst to masks that I put on the face, especially when people are surface dry. So sometimes you can use, and I think in my previous videos you've seen, I've worked with paraffin before, and I've used them in different sheets. I like, um, I like this one that the face is already cut out. That's kind of fun because it, uh, I don't have to sort of be applying it in, um, on the sides and just in the, the different applications that I was having to do before. So we have this lavender paraffin that we're putting on over top of the purifying mask. And what this does is it acts as a catalyst to the mask that the, that's underneath it. Now we've got the paraffin and we have it over top of the purifying mask acting as a catalyst to the mask that is underneath. At this time, I usually do either a hand and arm massage or a foot and lower leg massage. So we just normally leave it on about uh, eight minutes and then I'll be taking it off. So we'll be back to do that shortly. What we've done here now is we've removed, um, we've waited the eight minutes. I've removed the mask off her decollete and you can see with the camera hopefully that she's not as ruddy on her chest as when she came in. So that's really nice because we worked the bioflavonoids into her chest area where she had to, just to help support the little capillary walls. And now we're going, we've taken off the lavender sheet, the lavender paraffin sheet off her face as well. And now we're going to take off the mask with warm towels. You mentioned ruddy. Yes. Is, at first, earlier I thought you said red, but is ruddy, what is ruddy? Oh, ruddy is where you have a lot of color, pinkish color mm -hmm. in the face um, and the decollete, the, the ruddiness is just redness. Oh, okay. uh, it, It's not quite red, it's more pink. Mm -hmm. And I think when we say ruddiness, it means that it's just more pinkish. <laughs> Got it. But it, uh, it's just pinkish, you know. I yes. see. From the sound of it, it sounds like a word that would mean like bumpy or something. And I oh thought, yes. I was like, oh. oh no, <laughs> definitely not bumpy. Oh no. thanks. No, your skin is <laughs> is not bumpy. It's beautiful and smooth, and and now your pores look so much better. So what we've done is we've removed the mask. I've um, put a very light little coating of healing gel on her skin, which is basically an aloe based gel. And then I'm putting a little bit more retinol on her skin. Now, of course, I never use prescription. I don't recommend prescription retinols for anybody. I believe that you should be able to use your retinols, if not every night, a few nights a week. And uh, prescription retinols are a little bit too strong. They cause too much dryness and they damage the little blood vessel wall. And I just think that we have so many fabulous products out there that contain retinols. It's just not necessary to use prescription strength. So we've taken off the mask and we have on a light gel, just an aloe based gel. We've, um, we've worked the skin a lot. I've worked it a lot around her jaw area, which brings a little color to her skin. Uh, her skin, when I touch it and when I massage it, it feels firmer. It feels really good. And looking at her skin, I can see her pore size is already a, a much smaller pore. And her eye area is looking really nice because it's not as gray and it's those little lines are not there, that dehydration that she had when she came in. So I have suggested that we just leave this on her skin tonight and she go to bed as is. And, and I know I said to Jen earlier, um, just now finishing, that her skin is gonna feel a little bit tighter. It's not a dryness feeling, but it's a tighter feeling because the, the fibroblast cells have been activated. And that's what we want to really help keep that pore size small for her. So uh, her skin's gonna be really good and I'm excited to hear about it. It already feels yeah, good. Yeah, it feels good. It looks really pretty. So, uh, so we're all done. So thank you so much for being with us here for another video and um, we'll see you again.